Friends, welcome to worship for Sunday, January 30th, 2022, the fourth Sunday of Epiphany. I'm not entirely sure how it's the end of January already. Days seem to be zipping by, and yet the month has felt long, probably because of the bitter cold temperatures that we've been having. But maybe time and life in general are like that, moving at their own pace that seems to rush and crawl at the same time. Or maybe I'm just getting older and dreaming of spring and summer, of seeds and gardens, and hopefully of baseball too. We are making tiny bits of progress with COVID. We have now had five consecutive days of decreased numbers of positive tests in our area. That's Brown, Outagamie, and Shawano counties. The health department tells me that 14 consecutive days of decreased test positives will be a sign that we are getting the infection back under control. I continue to be grateful for your patience, flexibility, creativity, and faith in dealing with all of this. I know it's hard and frustrating, but we will get through it as we get through all things together. In the meantime, if you're in need of medical grade masks, please let me know as we have a supply at each church. And I learned this week that the Shawano County Library System, including all of their branches, are handing out N95 masks and they should be available at other places like pharmacies and clinics as well. We continue to pray for the people of Tonga as they are just beginning the long work of picking up and starting to rebuild after the devastating earth volcanic eruption and tidal wave. They have now had an earthquake as well. We keep the people of Haiti in our prayers since they are dealing with a recent earthquake as well. We continue to pray for the Ukraine as the drums of war get louder with Russian ships sailing to the area and lots of political posturing is going on. The people of Burkina Faso in Western Africa need our prayers after a coup there that has unseated their government. And all of that is before we get to the home front where cold temperatures, a massive blizzard, and increasing gun violence are rattling communities across our country. It may not seem like it does any good, but prayer does help. It might not particularly change a given situation, but it changes our hearts and our spirits. It helps us align ourselves with God's purposes and plan for the world. It gives us a moment of grace, quiet, patience, and peace in a sometimes very chaotic world. It stills us and allows us to see through the noise of the media, the conflicting and often screaming reports of what's going on, and it reminds us of God's great love for us and for all creation. In Parish News, your February newsletters went out by email this week, or they're included with print materials you're receiving today. Lent is coming, with Ash Wednesday be being March 2nd. Worship at Trinity will be at 5 p.m. and at Black Creek at 7 p.m., and there will be a special edition of this worship as well. In addition, we are resuming our midweek Lenten services, but details are still being confirmed, as many of them depend on the COVID situation. There will be a Lenten devotional book available with the March newsletter and worship materials on February 27th, so stay tuned for more information. And as always, please remember I am here for you and with you. Reach out to me or to someone. We can none of us get through this or anything on our own. We are designed for community, for depending on one another, for trusting each other, for growing together in the life of faith. That will be how we build God's kingdom here on earth in every minute of our days. Now, let us pray. We gather today with our joys and struggles, bringing all of who we are and might yet be, united in hope and faith, trusting in one great truth. God loves us completely. We gather today to hear the good news of God's love, to find inspiration and courage, to renew our lives, to take a stand for love as we worship and pray. And our first hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore You, is that great song of praise and celebration of God's love in our lives that calls us ever forward together. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. 
sun fall like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Spring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. And now let us pray together, remembering the Spirit is with us always. God of all our lives, you know us because you created us. You understand our hopes and dreams, our worries and our fears. Open us to your love. Let your love grow within us and help us to trust in you. Inspire us as we build a community founded on you and your great love for all creation. Give us the strength to trust in a love so strong and gentle that it can transform the world. In courage we pray. Amen. We join our hearts and minds together in prayer, deepening and strengthening the ties that make us Christ's community, uniting ourselves with Christians throughout time and across the world. Let us pray. Holy and gracious God, we come today in gratitude and thanksgiving for all the blessings of our lives. We thank you for friends and family, for community and our parish, for all the ways you provide for and connect us one to another. We thank you for the gentle reminders in our lives that you are with us each and every day. We give thanks for our congregations and our parish and all the ways you bring us together to learn and grow as your people. Inspire us all that we might walk more fully and more faithfully in the path that Jesus showed us, that we might truly be people who welcome all in your name, sharing your love with our words and, more importantly, with our actions. Help us open ourselves to the miracles that surround us, the kindness, goodness, compassion, and hope that are present if we will only look at the world with your eyes. Help us to see you in every person we meet, friends, family, strangers, those we believe are our enemies, and in our own faces. Remind us that there is no one you do not love, that we are bound together as your people and your beloved creation. Be with all those who stand in harm's way in our name, soldiers and sailors, firefighters, police officers, and first responders. Keep them safe as they do their work. Be with all the veterans and all those who have served. Be with all those who provide for us, whose work is so often unseen and taken for granted. Be with those who provide what we need, the goods and services we depend on. Be with those who grow and pick our foods, work in shops and restaurants, load and transport and deliver our goods. Be with those who help maintain our communities, collect our garbage, and serve us in any way. Help us to be truly grateful for them and to share our gratitude more clearly. Help us be kind and compassionate 
and understand how truly difficult and essential all this work is. Be with our medical professionals and facilities. They are exhausted, O oh God, tired of the struggle against COVID and uncertainty, yet they keep working on our behalf. Be with all who work in hospitals, clinics, nursing and care facilities, and child care programs. Give them the strength and courage they need for these days. Help us to do our part to lessen their burdens, to keep ourselves and our communities healthy, and remind all who do this work that we are with them in prayer. Be with all who are in government on any level, those entrusted with the sacred work of leading our communities and the world. Inspire them to do what is just and what is right for all your children and for all creation. Encourage and inspire our teachers and students, administrators and aides and all their families. Give them all they need to learn and grow together that our communities might be strong. Help us to open our hearts to all those who are seeking places to live in safety and hope. Be with those who are resettling here in the United States as refugees. Remind us that almost all our ancestors came to this place as refugees and immigrants, and let that inspire our compassion and kindness towards others. Be with, O oh God, all those who struggle in body, mind, or spirit, particularly those recovering from surgery and hospitalizations, those dealing with the particular challenges of cancer and its treatments, those who are struggling with their mental health and the difficulties of receiving help and support, those who struggle with addiction, those who are living with COVID and its long-term effects, including those in our community newly diagnosed and exposed to the virus, and with all in need of your healing grace. Grant to all in need of your healing, your grace, and your love. Remind those who struggle that we are with them. Be with all of us as we continue to struggle with this time in the life of the world. In the uncertainty of life, help us to trust that you are with us, that you are guiding and encouraging us, that you are giving us the courage and strength we need for this moment and for all that lies ahead. Comfort all who mourn and grieve, O oh God. Strengthen us if the loss is new or many years old, and help us to trust in your promise through Jesus of life everlasting. Be with all the places in this world you love so very much that are dealing with natural disasters, and all the places that are dealing with violence, war, and disease. Be particularly with the people of Tonga after the terrible devastation, with all those affected by the eruption and tidal wave, including those cleaning up the oil spill in Peru. Be with Burkina Faso, Afghanistan, Haiti, Tunisia, Myanmar, Yemen, Syria, Tigre, the Sudan, the Congo, the Ukraine, Palestine, Israel, and all the places where your people struggle for freedom and for peace. Be with the families of the missing and murdered indigenous women across the country. Help us learn about the reality of our shared history, particularly the history of slavery and residential schools. Help us listen and act that we might find a way forward, that we might create a world that honors the dignity of all people. Be with all the victims of violence, sexism, racism, and all the interconnected isms that cause hatred and discrimination. Inspire us and give us hope that we might create a new way forward, a path that recognizes you in all people and in all creation. Help us to challenge all that causes us to be divided. Guide us that we might ask ourselves the questions and take the actions necessary to do our part to build up your kingdom of grace and abundance for all. Renew our hope, strengthen our faith, deepen our patience, and inspire our hearts, and give us the strength we need for whatever lies ahead. Together, in hope, we pray the words that Jesus would one day teach his first disciples, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever. Amen. Come now to a time of confession because we know that none of us have lived as fully and faithfully as we could have. But we also come trusting in God's great grace and love. Let us pray. God of grace, we come today in honesty and hope. We confess that we are not always the people you know we can be. We get caught up in the chaos of our lives and of the world. We allow hate and division to fill us. We fail to offer comfort to those in need, and we look the other way when people are oppressed. We are afraid and anxious because the future is uncertain. And more than anything, O oh God, we cannot understand how you could love us as completely as you do. Forgive us. Turn our lives back to you. Help us trust in you more fully. Help us see the way you do with love and hope. Help us that we might offer love to everyone we meet. In hope and faith we pray. Amen. And now, in this time of silence, we bring our own personal concerns to God's forgiving grace. Hear the good news. God is with us, loving us, receiving us, forgiving us, and inviting us to new life. Thanks be to God. First scripture reading continues our readings in Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. This is Paul's great description of love that endures through all things. Reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 1 through 13, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. If I speak in the tongues of mortals and of angels, but do not have love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away all my possessions and I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice in wrongdoing but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. But as for prophecies, they will come to an end. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will come to an end. For we know only in part, and we prophesy only in part. But when the complete comes, the partial will come to an end. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became an adult, I put an end to childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part, then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. And now faith, hope, and love abide, these three, and the greatest of these is love. Our next hymn, I Love to Tell the Story, is about singing of God's great love made known to us through Jesus Christ.
last week's reading in Luke, we find Jesus at the synagogue in Nazareth, his hometown. At first, the people are thrilled. They hear from Joseph's son, but then, as he describes his ministry, their anger grows to the point they try to throw Jesus off a cliff. Reading from Luke chapter 4, verses 21 through 30, adapted from the New Revised Standard Version. Then Jesus began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do hear also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine all over the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing and the living of these scriptures. have heard from Paul in the first letter to the Corinthians talking about the gifts of the Spirit. The people in that first church are struggling with their lives with feeling like they don't have anything to offer to the work of God in the world. Paul writes to encourage them. Using the metaphor of a body, he reminds them that the Spirit gives everyone, absolutely everyone, a gift. Without all the different parts, Without all the different gifts, the work of God in the world would be incomplete. No one person has all of the gifts that are needed. We are designed, Paul tells them, to work together, to be with each other that the kingdom of God might come in its completeness. And today we hear what is probably the most famous part of the first letter to the Corinthians. Even people who don't have much experience of church have heard this scripture because it is the most popular reading at weddings, and it's worked its way into movies and TVs and all kinds of places. If, Paul begins, I can do all things, if I have all powers and but do not have love, then none of it matters. If I give away everything I own to the poor and I offer myself up as a sacrifice, but do not have love, it doesn't matter. I gain nothing. Love, love is what matters above everything else. Paul goes on to describe love, patient, kind, not arrogant or rude. It doesn't boast. It seeks only the best in others. It isn't resentful or arrogant or irritable. And perhaps most importantly for Paul, love is eternal. It will outlast all the other things that the world can provide. Love will be here long after prophecies and wisdom and all the things we can build and create with our hands. Of all the virtues in the world, faith, hope, and love being the greatest, it is love that will endure forever. As you know, February is right around the corner. February, that month that contains Valentine's Day. The cards and stuffed animals and giant heart-shaped boxes of chocolates have been in the stores since just after Christmas, but it's really all ramping up now. The ads are pouring in on the TV and the internet. Diamond earrings, makeup and spa days, more boxes of chocolates, flowers, even cards being offered us to demonstrate our love for the people in our lives. A long time ago, before I went to seminary, I worked for Godiva Chocolates. We had a store at the mall, and I survived four Valentine's Day seasons working for them 
which was an interesting life experience. We had folks who would come in and simply hand over their credit cards to purchase the biggest whatever we could put together for them, trying, I suppose, to show how big their love was with the biggest red velvet heart box. They didn't much care what we put in the boxes as long as it was big and filled and had a fancy bow. They were a bit frustrated particularly the ones who would come late in the evening on the 12th or 13th and wonder, screaming, demanding to know why we didn't have any more heart-shaped boxes left in stock. They'd all been bought up a few weeks before. But then there were the customers that made the whole season worth it. I still remember one little boy who came in with his dad. He was probably seven or eight, and dad stood a nice distance away to let the little boy do the shopping on his own. And he knew exactly what he wanted. Four candies in a little box with a green ribbon. So carefully we picked his candies out, and he helped me decide which shade of green was best for the ribbon. Then with some crumpled up dollar bills, he paid for the gift and I packaged it in a bag with some tissue and another bow. And then he told me why he was buying this present. His mom, he said, was in the hospital with his baby brother who came too early. They were doing okay, but mom wouldn't be home for Valentine's Day, so he couldn't make them breakfast in bed. And this, he thought, might be an okay thing to do instead. When I hear Paul's letter to the Corinthians, I think of that little boy. I think about a love that led him to reach into his piggy bank for his allowance or birthday money to get mom something he knew she liked. It wasn't big. It didn't particularly look like a Valentine's Day present, green bows not being the usual color of the holiday, but it was given so deeply from his heart and soul that there could be no doubt about the love behind it. Love. Love bears all things, believes all things, outlasts all things, and in the end, Paul says, it's all that really matters. We know that when Jesus is asked about how to live out our faith in the world, what we can do to show the world we are truly his disciples, he answers with the greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your spirit, and love your neighbor as yourself. Excuse me. <coughs> over and over again, Jesus will say that the way people will know if we are really following him is through our love, how we treat one another. Not just the people we already like, but the stranger and the foreigner, the immigrant and the enemy. It's through our love that we will show to God and ourselves and others what we really believe. But love, at least in our culture, is often really limited. We think about the love that parents should have for their children and that romantic partners have for one another and the love grandparents have for their grandkids. And Maybe the love of family ties, siblings and cousins and aunts and uncles and nieces and nephews. But really, that's it. We don't think about love in much bigger terms about the love that we could have for the people in our congregations or the stranger at the grocery store or the person we disagree with or the soldier on the other side of a battlefield. Paul and Jesus before him wants us to have a love so big, so great, that it includes everyone we can possibly think about. Our love isn't supposed to be some small closed circle of people we allow in. Love is supposed to be how we operate in the world, how we think about every moment of our lives and every action and reaction. It is supposed to be the deepest part of who we are, the basis of our very being and breathing in the world. We are supposed to look at this world and all the people and all the plants, and all the creatures, and all the rocks, and everything in it, and be filled with a love that nothing in this world can take away. But to do that, we have to have that kind of love in our lives. We have to have a new understanding of what love really is. Love is anything but simple. 
It doesn't just allow someone to go merrily on with their lives. It seeks the best for others, for ourselves, for everyone, for all of creation. Love wants us to live into who we were created to be, and sometimes, oftentimes, that gets messy. Love is holding someone's hand on their best day and on their worst. It's sitting with people at parties while we celebrate the good of this life and in the silence when there are not words to describe how terrible things are. Love is being there when the other person is being lovable and when they're not. Love is showing up and speaking the truth and working for justice and trying to end oppression and discrimination and hatred and bigotry and all of those isms and categories we are so fond of as humans. Love is not putting up with everything and anything to keep the peace. Love is sometimes drawing boundaries, having limits, knowing that the other person's behavior isn't okay and that the most loving thing we can do is to say no, to stand our ground and not let them get away with everything. Love is laughing and crying and struggling to figure things out with another person. Love is seeing with the eyes of God not only who someone is, but who they might yet become, that deep within them there is goodness and holiness and grace and mercy that is sometimes just buried under bushels of gunk and muck. Love is gritty and messy and glorious, wonderful, exciting, and agonizing all at the same time. If we commit ourselves to love, to this kind of love, it will break our hearts every day day. And at the same time, it will rebuild and restore our hearts every day. If we open ourselves to loving the world this intensely, as much as Paul and Jesus asked us to do, then we will cry and laugh. Our hearts will open more and more, and love will eventually become not something we do, but something we are. A few years ago, I wrote a poem called Lean Into Love, and it goes like this. Lean into love until your heart pounds and your hands shake and you're not sure where you're going, but you know more than anything you've ever known that you're on the right path. Lean into love so far you think you might just tip over and then lean a little further. That's what Paul asked the first people listening to his letter to the Corinthians to do. It's what Jesus said would truly show the world who his disciples were. And more than that, it's what he gave his life for. From the moment of his incarnation in Bethlehem through everything he said and did in his life to his crucifixion and through to the miracle of the resurrection, Jesus sided with love a love that gets messy and dirty in this world, a love that sees and seeks the best for everyone, a love that, in Paul's words, never failed. My friends, in this world we are living in, in full of conflicts and divisions, full of putting people into camps and deciding that some folks are completely other, not worthy of even the most basic dignities. This world that seems so full of violence and greed and anger and more, we are called this very day to be love, to go about our everyday tasks pouring love, deep, fierce, tender, complicated, passionate, enduring, justice-seeking, compassion-offering love into everything we say and do. It may not make the kingdom of God's promise come in its fullness, but I promise if we can do it together, if we can lean into love as individuals and as a community, as congregations in our parish, then the kingdom will already be here. We'll be alive in our very midst as we love and we love and we love some more. Amen. And now, having shared in worship together, let us pray in thanksgiving for God's blessings in our lives. Loving God, we thank you for gathering us together during this time and for all the ways you nurture and encourage us. As we live into this week, help us that we might be faithful to you and your call in our lives. Use and multiply all that we bring, our lives and our gifts, that the work of your kingdom might be done. Inspire us that all we do in word and deed might help make your love known to the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Our last hymn, Love Divine, All Loves Excelling, is a celebration of God's love for us and for all creation, a call to live in that love through all of our days. My friends, receive this benediction. May the grace of God, the love of Christ, and the presence of the Holy Spirit bring you courage and peace today and always.